In this video, we are going to work with DTFT, Z transform, and discrete system filtering. So, for the problem, we are given a difference equation describing an LTI system, and we're asked to find the impulse response of the system, the frequency response of the system, and then sketch the magnitude of the frequency response, and from that magnitude, determine the type of filter. So, let's get started. So for part A, we were asked to find the, the impulse response of the system. So to do that, we can let y of n equal h of n and x of n equal delta of n. So from that, we get h of n equals one-fourth times delta of n plus two times delta of n minus one plus delta of n minus two and that is the impulse response of the system. For part B, we were asked to find the frequency response of the system. And it's a little easier taking the Z transform of the impulse response and then converting that to the frequency response. So doing that, we get H of Z equals one fourth times one plus two Z to the negative one plus z to the negative 2, which simplifies to 1 fourth times z to the negative 1 plus 1 squared. And now, if we let z equal e to the j omega, we can find the frequency response, which is h of j omega equals one-fourth times e to the negative j omega plus one squared. Now in this form it would be a little bit difficult to plot this or plot the magnitude of this so we can manipulate this algebraically and see that is equal to one half e to the negative j omega over two times e to the negative j omega over two plus e to the j omega over two all squared. And if we notice, this and this correspond to a cosine. So we get e to the negative j omega over 2 times cosine of omega over 2 squared which then equals e to the negative j omega times cosine squared of omega over 2. And then we could use a trig identity to get 1 half e to the negative j omega plus one half e to the negative j omega cosine of omega. And that is the frequency response. For part C, we're asked to plot the frequency response. So when we let omega equals zero, magnitude 
h of omega. From this part, that's one half, and from this part contributes one half. So we get a magnitude of one. So here at zero, we have a one. And then if we continue on to omega equal to pi, well, the first part here is a negative one half, and the second part is positive one half, so the magnitude at that point is equal to zero. And due to symmetry, the magnitude at negative pi is equal to zero also. So you get something that looks like this. This is negative pi, and this is pi. Now for part D, we were asked to determine the type of filter. And if we look at this part right, right in here, just this side of the magnitude plot, we see that as the frequencies increase toward pi, they go down in amplitude. So that suggests that it's probably a low pass filter. And we can verify this by taking, if we take the 20 log of the magnitude of h at pi over 2, we get a negative. 6.02 and that suggests that is a the point where the amplitude is decreased by one half one half amplitude so that corresponds to the filter being a low pass filter